no nonsense from players. Wakefield was superior across the park and were fully deserving of the win. Please play the same way again on Saturday, Wigan. <laughs> Tim G Radio said, hashtag Wigan Slump 2018. That's a throwback from Tim. Uh, usually it's Leeds who are slumping. I'm sure they're slumping as well. Why are we not getting that hashtag again? Anyway. Oh, w- says, Wigan's a bad story. <laughs> He says, anyone else find the Golden Edge is looking more yellow in colour, especially when it comes to kicking? Also, not quite sure the Sky cameras need to labour quite so much on Michael Carter's sweat patches. Yeah, that was a, an interesting addition to the end of the game. Um, you could see him <laughs> definitely... It was a warm one. It was a warm one. And, it was a warm one. And when Wigan had a, an, a, an understrength bench that they didn't use, um, particularly in, in and they... they got some of their older um, players who played a lot of minutes as well some some people like Tony Club this year and um, put them out in that heat against a much bigger team a much more determined team a team that played much better um, and a team that Wigan seemed to think they could only stop by giving away penalties in that first half an hour whereas Wakefield like Brian said didn't make any mistakes in that first half an hour Um you know, you gotta say it was it was kind of one in that that time, and even though the game wasn't out of sight from a Wigan fan perspective at, at half time, it it never felt truly like we were going to come back. Even though I always talk myself into the most hopeful ways out of things. Um, ben Jones Bishop put pace to that. Sean O'Loughlin had a had a pretty poor game. I mean, and that pass just totally summed it up. It was fucking garbage. Um, hopefully, he doesn't do that for England next week. And, yeah, w- Williams did exactly the same as I criticised him for the week before. I think he's, he's not really playing as part of the team at the moment. I don't really get why, and I don't understand um, why that's the case. But you look at, like, the ab- absolute opposite of it is how how Miller plays for, for Wakefield at the moment. Everything seems to... You know, Miller's the main playmaking threat that they've got, just like Williams is supposed to be that for Wigan uh, in the halves. And... Williams is going and no one's going with him whereas Miller always has people with him at the moment in the last few games uh, and this is a wakey side that was utter garbage until a few weeks ago and uh, and now they've, they've found I think Ryan Hampshire had his only decent game in the halfbacks I've ever seen him play in Super League so credit to him for pulling that one out of the bag and um, you know Fafita and Paulie were sh- huge physically and Wigan couldn't cope with that uh, and Ben Jones Bishop t- to add to the couple of tries he got you know, Sam Tompkins fucking let him have that first one with a, this, you know, a, a wetter effort than he put in even to try and get... He put more effort to try and get Joel out of that pub and he certainly didn't put no effort into that. So so that's how bad that tackle was. Uh, he, did, he did get better in the, as the game went on, I thought, Tompkins, but that tackle was shocking. And... Um, and yeah, Ben Jones Bishop sealed it with that breakaway try for the from the interception. But he also put in a couple of good defensive pieces of work as well that I don't think you can you can overlook. And um, Wakefield were just better and deserved to win the game. Pe- you know, Wigan. You could argue that there was three eye shots given that weren't eye shots, or if they were eye shots, then there was other high shots the other way that weren't getting given. You could totally argue that from that first half of play because the one on Navarrete was an absolute joke. Um, you can't hit someone hard anymore at all. If they're at brushes against your body whilst you're hitting them hard with your arms around the fucking body, then it's a high tackle apparently, but not if it's on Tom Davies. But other than that, um, I've got no complaints at all. So, so yeah, there you go. You got a, a hint of a mark around sliding in. I was going to say, give them what, off so... I've got to give them what they want. But at the end of the day, <laughs> the best team won, and Wigan. Yeah put on a couple of good moves in the last 10 minutes of the first half and put on a few good moves in the last 10 minutes of the second half in the last 10 me- minutes of the second half it had become desperation stakes by that point so yeah. so, so it was way too late um, that try at the start of the second half killed us I've got to credit Wakefield they, they played really well and you can't take it away from them even if even if they weren't playing against the Wigan side that were playing at the, at the full Whack and Wigan each week seem to be putting out our weakest and weakest team over the last few weeks of the season so far. Certainly the two super, last two Super League games, but Wakefield beat what was in front of them and beat them well. Beat them well. Tom Davies' try was fantastic though from a Wigan point of view. Justice, um, I think, you know, you've got to give credit to um, Wakefield for building pressure more than anything for their tries. The Ben Joe's Bishop try, the Bill Tupu try, and the Tom Johnson try. They kind of came off 
Wigan putting themselves under pressure, but Wakefield yeah. was so consistent and so determined. And you've heard enough from me, guys. What what do you say? <laughs> I, I think actually, to be honest, I think you've been remarkably remarkably measured in that. But there, there was a little bit of a rant in there. But yeah, it was. Yeah, but I can't. For all of the what you've said, I can't disagree with it because Wakefield in the first half an hour just didn't give, didn't give you a chance. They've they didn't put possibly enough points on the board. There was a slight. You know, fear that perhaps they weren't far enough ahead. Um, you always question when teams are going for penalty kicks rather than um, rather than taking the taking the ball because you know you, we all know what you know. You know We're going to kill people season. earlier in the season, but that confidence is exactly. gone. Alan. That confidence it's gone. is gone. I mean, wh- wh- you know, wh- wh- where's it gone? It, magic isn't that long ago. It's um, gone because. You know, a few things have happened um, that have made the players have to reevaluate things a little bit and. And stuff like that, and then, uh, and then it's hard to get back because we're playing against sides. The whole KR one was excusable almost because of the emotion and the situation. Warrington were playing against a side that were playing really well, and yeah. we got the better of them on one day, and they got the better of us on another day, and it just was disappointing that we we're out of the cup and stuff. But yeah, Wakefield haven't even been in totally great nick. Recently. No, they they've haven't. Getting a bit better, they've, but they've been scratching. I mean, you know, you know, they've beaten the top two in the league at home, haven't they? Now, so you know, they, they can pull a result out when it counts. And as I said, in the first half an hour, you, you didn't get near them. I think um, Hamlin's try was a nice, as you said, the only bit of nice, <laughs> kind of nice movement you really did in the first half. Um, you know, there, it was, was it Williams to O'Clockland? Yeah, and but Ham- Hamlin. Hamlin was kind of symptomatic of what's been going on with a few other players it was a no it was a I think it was Sam Powell who sent a lot Powell, back across and yes, uh, and then he, he dropped it off to Hamlin on a really good line but I think that Hamlin's efforts were symptomatic of what Wigan have been doing there's been I don't think there's players that have not been played I think some of the senior players maybe haven't been putting in the right sort of effort that the, that was seen of them of late but most of the players have been putting in an effort it's just they've been doing it all on their own and not doing it together and Hamlin kind of sum that up he scored a great try put on a couple of good runs and a couple of good hits but then started missing tackles and having ineffective carries because he was trying to do too much and no one Mm. was telling him Gabe you don't need to have three tackles in a set because your last two tackles in the set carries in the set have been crap no one was telling him that there's no talk there was no saying settle yourself down give it to someone fresh whereas Wakefield just had a they just they just the attitude of England and stuff like that, you know, being injured in the morning and then yes. playing for 40 minutes in the first, pretty much the full first half. And Sorry, I keep talking. It's not my turn. <laughs> no, I mean, it, as I said, the, 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 this is your show, this, this game. Um, but no, I mean, it, it, they just, yeah, I mean, it, when you when you got the when you got movement and you kind of, you strung some things together, admittedly at the end you were, you were in desperation mode and, you know, th- th- those balls could have easily hit the floor as opposed to hitting hands as they did. But, um, but yeah, you, you were beaten by the better team and, and 32-16, Quite frankly, that's a bit. It's a bit generous to you, I think. I, th- I think they were they were by far the better team. They controlled you. Um, the penalty count in the first half. I sorry. I, th- I think it was about right. I, there was nothing I saw that was uh, go back and have a look at, Go back and have a look at every ticket carrier Tom Davies and tell me that there wasn't as much of a high shot as there was a high shot given on for feet where he just brushed the side of his head. Tom Davies got smacked round the head three or four times in exactly the same circumstances and no penalties were given. I'm not saying the penalties against us weren't penalties, but if you're going to give penalties for a tackle that brushes the side of the face on the way on the way around, give them for all of them, not just for the ones against Wigan. But I don't I'm not saying James Child had a bad game by the way. The, uh, the 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 descent that came up a bit going through this yes <laughs> and we we on Super League pub we applaud we applaud strong action against descent even though probably club and Fafita were justified in having some sort of complaint the way they went about it and the way they did it isn't appropriate shouldn't have been done and they were rightfully penalised and the one on club cost Wigan dear yeah. Can't argue. Can't, Can't argue with it. Do you have anything else to say? Yeah. We do the stats. <laughs> I'm going I'm, I'm, I'm to let you move on. Thank you. <laughs> okay. So, 
from the stats, Wakefield were better at making ground, 170 more metres at a better average gain than Wigan, and better at taking their chances, five tries to three, from five breaks to eight, so Wigan made more breaks, but couldn't capitalise on them because of great scrambling effort by Wakefield. More importantly, it seems from the stats, they were more disciplined with and without the ball. They made four fewer handling errors and gave away four fewer penalties, so well done to Wakefield on that. Individually, Ben Jones Bishop, two tries, 167 metres, two clean breaks. Tom Johnston, one try, 109 metres. David Fafita, who was, I think, up there with Ben Jones Bishop in the man of the match conversation, even though he did do most of his runs at half backs and stuff like that, it didn't matter. He was punishing Wigan's players that could have. No, he was, sw- he was swatting any, game, anybody away, to be honest with you, half back or not. So. Six tackle balls, 131 metres from him. And then Matty Ashurst with a strong defensive performance, 40 tackles, 10 of which were marker tackles for Wigan. T- um, you know, standard name on the team on the uh, stats sheet Tom Davies with a try five tackles 148 metres two clean breaks I'm glad for Tom that he got a try he deserves that every week Tony Club 117 metres Liam Farrell 40 tackles 12 marker tackles um but nothing, nothing going forward from him, which really is which is what well, you can do. Expect balls that were telegraphed, didn't he? Willie Ice are 109 yeah. meters, but I think a lot of that was on a couple of kick returns from dropouts. Okay, moving on to Friday now, we're going to start with Hull FC versus Salford. It finished 45-14 to the Black and Whites, but it was over at half time at 37 nil. <laughs> 10,606. Watch Robert Hicks referee this one. Do you want to start on one of the Nadins? Yeah. Deputy Nadin. I don't know what's going on with Deputy uh, Nadin, but go on. I don't know. Don't know, Deputy. Um, a game of two halves, 37 0 at half time. Hull was superb and the teamwork was outstanding. Second half, Salford made quick plays of the ball, which allowed them to chalk some points. Hicks did the ref usual and scratched his bum and found a yellow card for Farimo. All in all, a great game. P.S. Callie behaved herself as it was her birthday and a girly night out, of apparently. Of course. Happy birthday to Callie. Yes, uh, happy birthday. I hear that there was. There was a picture of her on the big screen during the birthday announcements during half time and all that sort of stuff. So, so that's uh, fantastic. Yeah. Um, AK. So happy birthday to Kelly. AK Steel 69. Hull set about Salford very professionally and led 37 0 at half time. To be fair, Salford were gash and their coach obviously thought the same and sent them out for an early, improved second half. Hull fielded 10 of their own academy products in their 17 and they proved how far the club has come under Radford and Pearson. Logan had his best game of the season at centre. Connor controlled and Westerman fucked his knee. More Another intrigued. one down. Right there. Yeah. So Joshua's granddad says, score flattered Salford for a very poor side, all over by half time, which allowed FC to rest players in the second half. With Farimo, it's definitely not a boring hat trick, nice assist for Shaw on the yellow card. Stand out by Connor again, stepping up to cover injuries. Only one fresh injury this week. Oh, there you go, a, a light week. Yeah, uh, Sarah said, another game, another injury or two. Well, she's disagreeing with her dad, though. She thinks there's two injuries. He said, the first half display was very impressive. We didn't let Salford's constant offside stand in the way of some lovely rugby. They sit behind the sticks. How do they know the offside? Nice oh, interception it's... tries by both wingers. And finally, Burita seems to have found confidence in backing himself. He still found time for a customary yellow, though. Second half, we were able to protect some of our players and have a team of youngsters and Danny Washbrook. So there you go. Uh, have you seen anything from this one? Have you seen the yellow card incident? That was totally a justified yellow card incident. And Faremo's <laughs> lucky to not be up for a charge, really, given he... It was. It, it looked like he jumped in with the shoulder. It, was, it all happened at pace. But it well, he's like got he previous, jumped, hasn't he? He jumped in with the shoulder, and yeah, he's definitely got previous. And this guy is a bit of a hazard. But going forward, he scored three tries. He did set up the best try of the game, in my eyes, Shaw's try, just, on the, just before half-time. Uh, which was a fantastic bit of play from the whole side and and um, finished off with a kick back inside by for Amo for, for um, Jamie Shaw to, to gather and go under the sticks. Uh, but totally comprehensive win from Hull this one. So uh feel a bit yeah, sorry when, for Salford, really. Yeah, when, when it's 37-0, there's, there's not a lot you can say, is there really? I mean, you've, you've kind of... You've, you've done the job and, you know, there's almost no no consolation in the fact that you won the second half because it's it's almost irrelevant you know Hull, Hull are thinking about next week and and trying to protect themselves from injuries aren't they so um yeah it's it's i mean yeah it's uh it was as you say it was over as a contest wasn't it and um you know even despite the injury toll they are you know they, they, they're doing what they needed to do against you know 
Do you want to give Jake Connor some that... credit? Because from the highlights <laughs> I saw, there was a really good offload in the build-up to Framer's first try, I think it was. He, there was a forward pass in the build-up to Jack Logan's try, I thought, but Jake Connor um, put for a big cut-out pass wide in the build-up to that. There was another offload off the back of a kick. I think it was in Jack Downs' try. It was a brilliant offload after getting up for it. Uh,